Hello, I'm Donald Mukahini, and today I'm going to be talking about my primary sources. Um, the point I'm going to make and argue about in my paper is that immigrants were not treated fairly. Um, they were used as spectacles, um, examples. Um, they were made to have live in harsh living conditions, and all to the benefit of the English or the white American at this time. I'm going to start with the Chinese political tax law, which um, at this time in 1862, in April, California law placed a monthly tax levy on any person that was an adult of the Mongolian race. Uh, most were people that were hired to work in the mines um, and other businesses in California. But the title of the act pretty much spells it all out. It states that this act is to protect any person of the white race against the competition of Chinese labor. It also prevents uh, the Chinese immigrant um, from to continue to come over into the United States, um, or actually any Chinese person to come um, and live in the state of California. Uh, it goes on to spell out that both male and females, 18 years and up, of uh, the Mongolian race live in the state of California will be taxed a monthly capitation of $2.50. The only exemption to this tax was if you are a manufacturer of rice, coffee, tea, and sugar. And my next source has to do with two Italian immigrants. Um, and it comes from an article from the New York Times. And um, it states that Sacco and Vincetti were put to death early this morning. Now, between 1880 and 1920, more than 4 million Italian immigrants were documented as coming into the United States. Now, no other group had as many immigrants coming to uh, the United States in this small period of time. This is one of the most prominent and political early cases of Italian immigrants getting the death penalty in the U.S. Two were charged for the murders of a paymaster and his helper, his guard, carrying $15,776 of factory payroll. Um, down the streets, or down one of the main streets of South Braintree in Massachusetts, uh, they were said to have been hiding, um, standing by a fence, open fire, they took the dropped cash box, and they sped away with a gang of other immigrants, probably four to five people. Now, this trial was seen to have been harsh and unfair. Um, Zeddy was charged for an earlier failed robbery attempt where no one was hurt. Uh, he even had a very strong alibi, but the thing was most of his witnesses spoke Italian. Um, they hardly spoke any English. Most of the their testimony had to be translated, and the American jury just wasn't convinced by their testimony. And his sentencing for the earlier crimes showed that the pair and their supporters uh, were in a very hostile environment, a hostile bias uh, with the authorities, and had total political undertones. Um, now, my next story, or next story, my next source is that of a slave. Uh, his name was James Mars, and he was uh, a slave. That was in Connecticut, and this is a, basically an autobiography that he had wrote. Um, it was called A Slave Born and Sold in Connecticut. Uh, James Marsh wrote this book to tell about his story of when he was a slave in Connecticut. His sister that lived in Africa encouraged him to tell of his story. She was never a slave because she was born after her parents were free. Uh, he tells how slaves were treated differently in the North than they were in the South. They were actually thought of as part of, part of the family, and most of the counts of slavery at this time were based upon the cruelty and mistreatment that was suffered. But James actually talks mainly about his complex relationship with his owners and the realization that no one really knew that slavery existed in Connecticut. Um, my next account comes from um, a person that actually traveled and and wrote stories about his travels. Uh, it's an account of an English immigrant arriving at Castle Garden in New York aboard a ship. Uh, 
the ship contained about 300 immigrants from the old world. They had two or three nights of turbulent weather during the travels that made it safely through the banks of Newfoundland, a site where many ships have gone down in this time period, so it was kind of scary to uh, have any travel there. Um, for days, there was nothing to see but blue and green of the water, and a ship here and there, and the birds, you know, belonging to the open sea. So when the shoreline of the city of New York came into the picture, they were all very happy um, and, and thought it was actually an electrifying sight to see the lights. Uh, the ships would drop their anchors away from the docks, and the smaller ships would load the passengers and the luggage and take them ashore. Uh, the ships would then go down to the South Street docks to get more supplies to, to basically make another run. Now, you know, these are my sources, um, but to me, the legacy of American immigration is basically twofold. Um, it, it's huge, both sides. It's positive because you see that America was, it started off as always has been and still is to this day, a huge melting pot. <clears throat> you know, we had the natives who were here, <clears throat> excuse me, before anyone else. Uh, you have the English settlers, uh, Irish, Blacks, Italians, Mexicans, Chinese, that all had their place and their stories in American immigration. Um, the negatives for me is basically the way that those immigrants came about and the things they had to endure and go through in order to become a part of American society and become citizens eventually, you know, hundreds of years after they actually came to this land. The, the living conditions, you know, the um, torture that some went through, especially, you know, as slaves, the being in slave ships and, and the lynchings, you know, the Chinese uh, having to go through what they did in, in California, the Mexicans having their lands taken away from them, promise that they will be under, you know, uh, the ruling of America to taken care of. But that didn't happen because they just took their land. You know, we basically have uh, the Southwest now, Arizona, California, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Texas. Um, you know, we basically went and made a treaty to take care of their people and didn't stick up for it. So there's a lot that goes with the legacy of American immigration. Um, a lot of people had to suffer to build this nation. Um, but, you know, it, for me, I'm grateful for that suffering, obviously, because uh, being a, a, a black American myself, um, I think if all those things didn't happen, we would probably be still going through the same things that they went through at that time here today. Um, there's still parts of it, you know, very small parts that you see in existence, you know, but for the most part, um, we, we built the society on um, the immigration.